Still here at Colston Avenue, Carl Shorten Athletic 1, Bognor Regis Town 0. It could have ended up 6-5 to us in the end. Um, I've been joined by Alberto. Alberto, what a breathless game from where I was sitting. Um, what did you make of it, firstly? If you're a spectator, you think what a fantastic game to watch. Uh, however, for us, uh, delighted that we got the 1-0 win. But disappointed, they, you know, we could not convert the chances that we had. But listen, take the three points. Bogner, they're a fantastic side, you know, and they like to play the ball. So do we. But overall, we came on top and uh, very pleased. Been very fortunate to be joined by Lee, who's the lead commentator for uh, Rocks Radio, who cover Bogner Regis Town home and away. Lee, thanks for joining us. Um, do you feel like me? I feel a bit sort of shaken and stirred after that. What a game that was. We spoke before, didn't we? And uh, to be honest, <coughs> right result on, on the day. As I said in commentary, disappointed that we lost the runs over, but I think Carl Shilton should have been three or four. You had the chances, you just didn't take them. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a fair assessment. I mean, both sides created so numerous chances throughout the game, and from our point of view, lucky it didn't cost us, we didn't convert another one. But from your point of view, was it just one of those days in front of goal? The problem was we had two front men that didn't really look like scoring. No offence to, to Scuddy and, and Smudge, it just wasn't their day, and... Personally, I would have liked to have seen Aaron Hopkinson start because we know he's got the pace. As I say, it didn't happen. No cons with the result. And once um, Peter Eddie came on, he looked the difference for you guys. He really did. What did you say to the lads in the dressing room firstly after that? Um, just well done. Um, clean sheet. Um, they're the third one in a row in the league, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, if you keep a clean sheet, you can't lose a game of football. And that's what we've been stressing in the changing room. And today against a very, very good side, um, in my opinion, one of the best side in the league, we managed to restrict them to very few opportunities. So that was the most pleasing thing for me. Um, John, what was it like from, from your seat today? Obviously, it was end to end, chances are plenty. And I can't quite believe it only ended up 1-0, really. No, I mean, uh, it could have been <laughs> you know, a lot more than that. We hit the post, I think, hit the bar. Um, they had good chances as well. But two attacking teams, I said, I said before the uh, match on the PA system, it's going to be plenty of goals, there may be plenty of goals. There was no creeping doubt coming in, like chance after chance was being spurned. I mean, the, you're smiling now, but I mean, Jer Jerry had a chance, Christy. I mean, Bobby hit the post again in the second half. Yeah, you just um, kind of hope that, you know, they don't nick one after all those chances go begging. Um, so, yeah, there was kind of like a little bit of, oh boy, like, please, 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 let's not, <laughs> let's not pay for all these missed opportunities. Um, I mean, when... Each chance was being missed. I just kept turning around to the back four, pa Paris. <laughs> did they just make sure we don't concede. Whatever happens, we don't concede. And did you get a good view of the goal? I thought it was a wonderful bit of class, actually. Nice little one-two between Tommy and Kashani. It was. It was great to see Kashani score. Is it his first goal this season? Yeah, yeah I mean, he, he deserves it because he's been uh, playing really well in, in midfield. Has great understanding with Bradford and uh, Adonai. So uh, long may that continue. Neat little one-two between Kashani and Tommy. And he's finally got his goal. Absolutely, so delighted for Kashani. I hope uh, his injury is not too bad. Uh, but like, outstanding. I mean, if you look at the, the link up play, the movement and uh, the pass and the, the quality of the finish was really, really good. So please. What happened with Smith today? Was it just the fact that he came up against a, a, a well marshaled defence or did he just have an off day, do you think? I think you guys have done your homework on him. He scored a hat trick against Henfield and possibly that's the reason why he hasn't scored today because. You guys have done your homework and every time he, he had the ball, you had two or three players round him and that's the difference between a side that's going to be challenging at the top and a side that's going to be challenging for the playoffs. And I think Carl Shorten are going to be there or thereabouts at the end of the season. Last week we played against the league's top goal scorer, didn't have a sniff. Today their number nine's got 16 goals this season, didn't have a sniff. Is it something that you, you talk about with the, with the defenders like pre-game or, or do you just tell them to sort of stick to their job and, and know what they can do best? Well, they're very good defenders, um, each and every single one of them. Um, unfortunately, we obviously lost Luke um, quite well midway through the first half, which which is a massive blow. But we changed our formation, um, which seems to give us a better footing in the game. Um, but Paris and Papo with Clayton was absolutely outstanding. I mean, the back four today, um, Lenny went left back, Shane went left back, <laughs> Chido went left back. Um, but that's exactly what we need a squad for. Um, you know, it was, again, nice to have Harry back today. Ricky was a little bit under the weather, so we just decided to rest him. Um, he needed it anyway. Um, so he hasn't played last year game, so he's now at his rest. Uh, and hopefully we'll be raring to go again next week, but the back 
the whole unit, everyone from the front defended really, really well and threw our bodies on the line when we needed to. The squad looks a little bit threadbare at times, but then Harry Ottaway came back today and was involved, which is obviously a fantastic plus, but it's not good to see Ricky Corboa out. We need Olas Bamu coming back in, Dudley, etc. You know, so what, what do you make of that? You know, well, you know, we've got some key players out, haven't we, at the moment. Harry's great to come back today. He did exactly what he always does, back to goal, holds the ball up well and plays it off and gave their back four a, th a few things to think about. Harry Ottaway obviously made his return today. He was uh, on the bench and he came on for 20, 25 minutes. How do you think he did? And more importantly, what does he bring to the team? He did very, very well, considering he's been out for years now, <laughs> <laughs> in the nicest possible way. Uh, I must admit, er every week I'm like, come on, Harry, come on, Harry, come on, Harry, come on, Harry. And uh, so delighted for him, so delighted for the fans. You can tell everyone was looking forward for him to come on. Brilliant to the Robins fan uh, cheering him on. But you can tell what a type of player he is. You can tell in terms of his link up play, his strength, his intelligence. And uh, he could have had one, one potentially there, L linked a couple of chances. So delighted that he's back. And then we've got to look for a couple of other players coming back as well. So the future's looking good. And you guys are on a really good run of form at the moment. I think you're going to be up there as well come the end of the season. Um, just give us a quick word about the form that you've been in since the start of October. It's been fantastic. It's been absolutely fantastic. The, the problem was that we didn't have a confident goalkeeper. We had players coming in um, who weren't literally playing one game, one mistake, and in and out the side um, playing young keepers. We've now got Amadou um, Tangera coming in. He's signed, actually, um, Love Non League on Twitter, managed to get him in. And since then, him and Joe Cook have been absolutely superb. They can't keep relying on you scoring every game, can they? The forwards. <laughs> Popped up on Tuesday night, didn't he, the big man? Um, you, you told me that that free kick routine wasn't on from the training ground. That was just something that kind of came out of the thin air. Well, just the picture that was kind of presented on the day. Um, they set up to for a cheater shot, which you can understand why they'll do that. And, you know, they left Tommy free at the edge of the box. Um, so I kind of saw an opportunity and a gap. And luckily enough, you know, Cheeto and Tommy were on the same wavelengths. Um, I didn't actually tell Tommy what we were doing. It was just Cheeto. Cheeto passed the ball to Tommy. And, uh, you know, Tommy was clever enough to kind of know what I was thinking. And, yeah, nice assist. But, you know, everyone thought we worked on that. But, no, nah, it was in the moment kind of thing. Well, but I mean, you, you, say, you say nice assist. I mean, it was a cracking finish from you. We, we, you normally try and toe poke him in from a yard, but you thrashed at him with your left foot as well. I just wanted to get on target and get get over the keeper. Um, I don't think anyone would have forgiven me if I didn't score from that, you know, six yards out. What have you guys been putting in the defender's tee? Sometimes it's a psychological thing. I mean, we have worked on bits and pieces. I mean, uh, Paps has come in, uh, you know, he's brought that stability. Not that Duds wasn't doing it. Uh, Clayton's starting to keep the clean sheets now, which is fantastic. But all of us as a team, you can tell from uh, from the start off, I think I mentioned it at uh, the Bracknell game, is about if we apply the pressure early doors from the, the front unit and then everybody follows, then we'll try and keep it tight at the back. And the boys are working hard for and with each other. So absolutely delighted.